I saw the recent news, the Google's layoff. So will Google support for the Flutter will continue? AGI, when do you expect to achieve it? Wow. What do you think about Learn to Code today? That more critical in the future is... Can you please say hi to Joe Coding subscribers and introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to be here with Joe Coding and appreciate you all having me. I'm Janine Banks. I'm the vice president of Developer X. Our team at Google, we're responsible for our developer ecosystem and communities, as well as products and tools that help developers to build applications, particularly those that are powered by AI, which I think we'll talk about today. Yeah, right. I have a question. Can you explain how Gemini and Gemma are different? Because uh, it's very hard to distinguish because Gemini has very different size. So Gemini is what is different from Gemma? Yeah, well, thanks for the question. I love this question mm. uh, because we have both Gemini, our most capable AI models mm. from Google, as well as Gemma, our mm. open family of lightweight AI models, mm. uh, both state-of-the-art. And so what's different between them? What we've really designed Gemini to do is provide the most capable of uh, capabilities across use cases that are really designed for performance, the lowest latency, latency, the most advanced reasoning capabilities. And, and what you will see is that Google's products are powered by Gemini. So uh, we've embedded them into our consumer tools from Google search to Google Workspace, uh, really across our, our offerings, but also for developers. Uh, we have Gemini in many of our development yeah. tools now. Vertex um, AI. Right, Vertex AI. We have Gemini in Android Studio, mm -hmm. Firebase, Project IDX, really a whole range of tools. So it's really important to us that we're enabling our most capable models to be available to both consumers and developers and enterprises that rely on our platforms. Mm -hmm. Now, Gemma, Gemma, super exciting. Mm -hmm. um, we've recently even introduced some new variants of Gemma, mm -hmm. from Code Gemma to really specialize into coding use cases, mm -hmm. uh, which developers will love, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> as well yeah. as uh, recurrent Gemma uh, using uh, recurrent neural networks. Mm -hmm. And so what's different there is that it's tailored for use cases where developers want to be able to deploy to devices, mm -hmm. uh, their desktop applications, uh, as well as being able to bring their own data mm -hmm. uh, to the model for fine tuning. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's really great because we've seen developers since we've introduced Gemma in February of this year uh, just really applying it to so many different kinds of applications mm -hmm. ranging from being able to extend to other languages from around the world. We've also seen developers embedding Gemma into applications for education and students mm -hmm. as well as everything else in between, entertainment, oh. uh, creative use cases. And so really able to fine tune with your own data and be able to have flexibility, the choice to deploy on cloud infrastructure, deploy to local environments. So you really get the best of both worlds <laughs> with Gemini and Gemma. Oh, okay. Thanks for your explain. And uh, what are some other tools and resources that Google is providing to support build AI application? So one of the things that I think we do uniquely from Google mm -hmm. is providing tools that both help developers to mm -hmm. uh, start their journey with AI in the most easy and, and the fastest way possible. So mm -hmm. that's where Google AI Studio comes in oh. uh, because you can easily go in and start to uh, do test prompts and prototype your AI applications. You can really see if the prompts are working as you expect. And then you can very easily turn that into code mm -hmm. that you can use into your IDE or you can open up a Colab notebook. So it's really what we say, mm -hmm. the fastest way to get started with Gemini and using the Gemini APIs. Now, at the same time, for enterprises, companies mm -hmm. that want to be able to apply to their own applications using their own data and having control uh, and being able to enforce their guardrails and policies on how AI is used. Vertex AI gives mm -hmm. them the power, right, to be able to also have the flexibility to deploy across many different hardware, uh, GPUs, CPUs, TPUs from Google, and different kinds of cloud service infrastructure mm -hmm. too, like Google Kubernetes Engine, mm -hmm. uh, as well as our compute infrastructure. So really, you get the best of both worlds. The oh. early use cases if you're new, but also you can do more advanced things as well. What are the most interesting things or unexpected application of AI that developers have created using Google's tools? Well, man, there's so many. Oh, <laughs> That's a hard 
good question. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, one thing that I think this technology and the frontier with AI, generative AI, mm -hmm. has the potential to do is really enable the next generation of mm -hmm. children and students that are coming up to be able to do things that and create an environment and create applications that we hadn't even thought of before. Mm -hmm. And so I like to look toward what are the things that are changing how students learn, changing how they entertain themselves. Mm -hmm. So for example, you know, I've seen a use case where helping students be able to prepare for exams or tests. And so being able to take one of our Google uh, developer group members had came up with this use case to say, okay, can we take sample tests, be able to fine tune uh, Gemma mm -hmm. using those the test data and then allow you to prompt the fine-tuned Gemma model on uh, different potential answers to oh. tests and see if you get it right. Do like oh. a sort of practice test. Then you can imagine a world where you can interact with AI to oh. prepare for exams oh. and to come up with some creative scenarios for, you know, to challenge you and how you mm. think. So I think that's, those kinds of things are just really exciting. But the other thing that's particularly powerful about Gemma and I, if I switch there, is how is multimodal. So now you can bring image data, you can bring audio and voice, video. a video, exactly, and bring create applications that are really immersive and interactive. So I think, you know, those types of examples are really interesting too. And I think you'll see some of that at I.O. this year. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm very excited to see that. And um, next question is, how do you think the role of the developer will change as AI continues to develop so and which skill will be more valuable in future well you know i don't think any of us can predict mm. right but i think the future is pretty exciting if we think back to different points of time take 10 years ago or 30 years ago and what it meant to be a developer the kinds of languages you use the levels of abstraction yeah. that you worked with remember when we had visual basic mm. and you <laughs> interact at a very higher yeah. level of abstraction Traction, but you still use assembly language uh, in certain fields oh, and at yeah. least when you're learning. So I think going forward, we'll probably still have a certain degree of coding. But more importantly, I think even now and in the future, really about that algorithms and mm -hmm. architecture and yeah. ultimately problem solving, complex problem mm -hmm. solving. And so I think even with generative AI, where you have this like, like a partner and assistant that can work mm -hmm. with you and augment and help you go faster in thinking about about problems, you're still going to need those deep problem solving yeah. skills, understanding algorithms deeply. You want to know what the AI is doing, yeah. right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And so it's going to be important to have that knowledge. Mm -hmm. I also think though that, you know, I think for years when I went to school and I, I think in most computer science programs today, students are encouraged to also build soft skills. And this is, you know, communication oh. and how you convey information and those mm -hmm. interpersonal relationships, it becomes even more more important in the future for developers. You're just going to, this notion of like your communication skills, both visually and verbally, because now we're prompting AI, right? Yeah. We're a multimodal applications. We can give it audio, we can give it pictures, we can, you know, provide text and who knows the other modes that will come, right? And so I think being able to communicate effectively in those different forms, maybe language arts, visual arts, liberal arts will become even more important in the future, I think. Oh, I agree with that. Okay, and I saw the recent news, the Google's layoff, and there is concern with the developer community that the Flutter framework might be discontinued because there are layoff of Flutter developer news. So will Google support for the Flutter framework will continue? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yes. Um, so the Flutter framework is yeah. part of the engineering team that mm. I lead at Google. Oh. So it's part of our Developer X group. Mm. And it's amazing how fast Flutter has grown and how it's used all around the world to create amazing mm. applications and games. And so we continue to be totally committed to that mm. and excited about oh. what will be possible now when you take Flutter and generative AI together, being able to control every pixel. Mm. And 
and leveraging AI to tailor those experiences, I think that's going to be pretty powerful. So we we remain pretty committed to oh. Flutter. And I know it's popular yeah. here in uh, Korea too. Yeah, right? it's very popular in Korea. So many people had worried about, oh, Google is dropping Flutter and <laughs> scared about that. No, I, I think that um, the, the future is bright for oh. Flutter. What do you think about the next big trend in the AI and developer ecosystem that developers should look out for the coming years? One of the things that we talked about mm. out at our most recent conference is called mm. uh, Cloud Next. We had Cloud Next in Las Vegas uh, mm. just a month ago, um, last month, and we talked about our vision for AI agents. And we're just seeing our customers and developers are exploring ways to build agents and even deploying some agents into production for customer service use cases, for marketing uh, applications, for financial services, really across different industries. And we talked about some of those that are doing that. So, you know, we, we see that happening, but it's early. Mm -hmm. What we think will happen as we go forward, if we step back and think, what is an AI agent? Well, one of the qualities is that having a certain level of autonomy, right? Being able to take action. Also being able to take action based on a goal and, and seeking and, and working toward a goal. And then also being where multiple AI agents can interact with each other to solve and achieve that goal and even create a plan for how to achieve the goal. If we think about these ideas, wow, the future of AI agents will be really uh, you know, powerful in terms of the types of things that are possible, but also with supervision. Right. Mm -hmm. From being able to have supervision from your processes of enterprise and your policies, but also, you know, humans and AI agents being able to work together to be able to solve different problems and to complete different tasks. So we think that that's going to be a really important part of the future. Uh, sure. One other thing I would say yeah. is, you know, it's really intriguing how we as people, we interact mm -hmm. with applications today. Right. We use our phones. We mm -hmm. use our tablets. We uh, interact with applications on different services, really. And it's, the possibilities are endless when we consider that how AI can interact with interfaces and really having this sort of ambient nature of how we can, you know, shop and travel and pay our bills and give money, you know. I think it'll be really interesting how that evolves, where we have frameworks like Flutter, like yeah. you mentioned, which are enabling these dynamic experiences. Now you bring generative AI into it and those UIs become personalized and they become reactive and responsive oh. to what the person is requesting or what the person's individual goals are. So those are powerful things. And, you know, I think it's early days now, but it's going to be interesting in the future as this evolves. Very good insights. Oh, thank you. Gemini is already skilled at coding and it seems it will improve even more in future. In near time, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang said uh, recently, uh, mentioned that learning computer science might not be necessary. So what do you think about learn to code today, like today's tech environment? What advice would you give to someone who wants to start a career as a software developer? Well, the question is, think about the example of um, I'm a pilot, I'm flying a plane. Today, planes are pretty advanced, right? They have a lot of automation, there's support and aids, and mm. but you still want really experienced yeah, and yeah. wise pilots uh -huh. flying the planes, right? Yeah, yeah. Because because they're making some really critical decisions mm. and right. uh, could impact uh, you know, many people. And so I think it'll be like mm. that, where you will need to know what's happening with these algorithms. What is AI doing? But one of the things that I think becomes even more critical, mm. which is still needed now, but like I said, more critical in the future, is just getting back to understanding deep depth of math, mm. math and um, yeah. advanced mathematics and statistics, because that also goes into making sure you understand what's happening under the hood. And it's also about like, how do you, every time we've had different technological shifts, we've also seen um, while these things are built for good, there are potential things that uh, there are people that might find ways to, you know, where these things can be harmful. So at Google, we were taking this approach to our developments in generative AI to make sure that it's bold, but also responsible. And we've really centered on our AI principles and how we built open models like Gemma, how we build Gemini, the processes, um, you know, red teaming, 
teaming, blue teaming, all of the things that we do to make sure that these things are safe. And so I think that also developers will need to understand safety at a new level. It's not just security or data. It's not just data at rest, data in transit. Is it secure? Is it private? Is it encrypted? But this new level of safety is needs to be understood. And I think that that's going to be really important for developers in the future. Does Google have specific goals and timeline for achieving artificial general intelligence, AGI? And how does Google define AGI? And what makes it different from the current state of the AI technology? When do you expect to achieve it? Wow. <laughs> so I can't answer that question. I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't want to try to predict uh, something that, okay. that huge. Um, but what yeah. we've had is um, you've seen with our Google DeepMind team and uh, the vision around uh, AGI that we've communicated um, so far, I think it's really bold. But I think it also shows that like we're on this curve where intelligence is advancing. We see the technology to support it. We see the compute resources, uh, capacity for computation, capacity for memory and storage. I think that we're seeing all these things kind of come together where we're seeing more and more advancements. I mentioned DeepMind, we have had uh, breakthroughs like with AlphaFold, where being able to uh, decode proteins, uh, it's just amazing, right? And so when you think about the things we've been able to accomplish, you could only imagine where things are going, but I can't give a date for oh. <laughs> when, you know, <laughs> AGI. AGI will be here, but maybe yeah. a, a good follow-up would be mm. with uh, our head of Google DeepMind, uh, Demis Hassabi. Oh, okay, thank you. And the last question, I understand your team activity it supports developer community worldwide, uh, including Korea. And I'm excited to connect with um, several Google developer group lead uh, expert community leaders during this year's I.O. I'm curious about uh, your perspective on the unique impact of Korean developers are making both locally and globally. Yeah, it's it's huge, huge impact. First of all, did you know that Korea is ranked number six in the world for AI? Oh, a, oh yeah. number six? Yeah. Yes, and um, it's, it's, it's because I think that it's just been such growth and so much uh, learning and a big part of that is because of the developer communities that, mm. that's grown. For example, with Google, we have, like you mentioned, Google mm. developer groups. Yeah. We have 14 in Korea. We have Google developer student clubs, which are chapters uh, that are partnered with academic institutions. And we have 36 of those in mm. Korea. We have 16 Google developer experts mm. in Korea and Google GDE. They are really advancing and evangelizing the, you know, the cutting edge of what's new with not only Google's technology, but in the field um, at large. And we have, I believe, you know, several machine learning GDEs just right in Korea, too. So far in the past uh, 12 months, we've trained almost a thousand developers in Korea. And I'm really excited about what we're doing with our ML bootcamp. Actually, uh, Korea is where we founded the mm. Google's ML Bootcamp. Oh, yeah, I heard of it. Yeah, yeah. and we've actually trained, um, you know, almost a thousand have gone through the bootcamp. And the really amazing thing is GDEs and those that have graduated from the ML Bootcamp in Korea, they've actually gone to other countries mm. and other regions and helped others learn AI and machine learning as well. So I think that just shows the wide impact of developers in Korea. It became teacher country. Exactly, <laughs> right? It just kind of seeded here yeah. and then it just grows beyond. Oh. And thank you for participating in the interview. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks to you. Thank thanks. you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Digital love, digital